Suffer positive integers a, b, and c such that 3 to the power of a plus 4 to the power of b equals 5 to the power of c. Which I will do firstly. Now, what we firstly do is to look at the residues mod 4. Because 4 is common to 0 mod 4, so 4 to the power of b is also common to 0 mod 4. And 5 is common to 1 mod 4, so 5 to the power of c as well. So that means that 3 to the power of a is common to 1 mod 4. What does it imply? 3 to the power of a common to 1 equals uh, 3 to the power of a common to 1 modulo 4 only if and only if a is even. So a is equal to 2 times a1. Of course, we can also look at the residues modulo 3 on the both sides. 3 to the power of a is common to 0 mod 3 and 4 to the power of b is common to 1 mod 3. So it implies that 5 to the power of c is common to 1 mod 3. And this happens if and only if c is even. c is equal to 2 times c1, for example. Of course, we can write this equation as 4 to the power of b equals 5 to the power of c, which is 5 to the power of 2 times c1, minus 3 to the power of a is 3 to the power of 2a1. And here, it is 5 to the power of c1 minus 3 to the power of a1 times 5 to the power of c1 plus 3 to the power of a1. Because 4 to the power of b is 2 to the power of 2b. And the product of these two terms equals a power of 2. So what does it mean? It implies that 5 to the power of c1 plus 3 to the power of a1 and 5 to the power of c1 minus 3 to the power of a1, these two factors both have to be equal to powers of 2. For example, this is 2 to the power of s and this is 2 to the power of t. Because this one is greater than this one, so s should be greater than t and their sum should be equal to 2b. Now what we can do is to express 5 to the power of c1 with terms of a to the power of a1 and 2 to the power of s and 2 to the power of t. 5 to the power of c1 is actually equal to the sum of these two functions then over 2. So that is 2 to the power of s minus 1 plus 2 to the power of t minus 1. Because s is greater than t, so we can take out 2 to the power of t minus 1. Then in the bracket, we have t, 2, to, 2 to the power of x minus 1, then minus t minus 1, which is s minus t, then plus 1. Similarly, 3 to the power of a1 is 2 to the power of t minus 1, then times 2 to the power of s minus t minus 1. Notice that 5 to the power of c1 and 3 to the power of a1 are both odd numbers. So what does it mean? It implies that t has to be equal to 1. If t is not 1, if t is greater than 1, then 5 to the power of c1 and 3 to the power of a1 should be both divisible by 2, which is impossible because they should be odd. They are two odd numbers. If t equals 1, then I'm going to let s minus t equals u. So therefore we get 3 to the power of a1 is 2 to the power of u minus 1. Again, we look at the residue mod 3. And we can get 2 to the power of u should be common to 1 mod 3. And this happens if and only if u is even. u equals 2 times u1. So 3 to the power of a1 is 2 to the power of u1 then all to the power of 2 
minus 1. And this one is, of course, 2 to the power of e1 plus 1, then times 2 to the power of e1 minus 1. The same argument, 2 to the power of e1 minus 1 should be a power of 3, and 2 to the power of e1 plus 1 as well. This is, for example, 3 to the power of beta, and this is 3 to the power of alpha. From here we can get 3 to the power of alpha minus 3 to the power of beta is equal to 2. However, a distance of 2 powers of 3 is equal to 2, which is almost impossible, unless alpha is equal to 1, beta is 0. In this case, we can get u1 should be 1. So therefore, u is equal to 2. If u is equal to 2, then a1 should be 1 and a should be 2. And then we can get all the values of a, b, and c. We get a equals b equals c. They're all equal to 2. Do you get it? Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to me for more wonderful questions, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.